A lot of indie games go unnoticed and don't receive the recognition that they deserve, so I've devised a list of 5 games worth playing. Without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have Skull the Hero Slayer. I've been playing this game since it was an early access, and I've seen a lot of growth come from it. It's a fast-paced, action roguelike 2D side-scroller where you play as a little skeleton named Skull who is out to stop the humans from wiping out the demons from the earth. In an interesting twist, some of the humans have begun corrupting themselves with dark courts to gain the power to fight the Demon King's army. Some adventurers are blind to what the Human Kingdom is doing and still fight because they believe Skull is the enemy. Unlike other roguelikes where you gain different weapons, Skull's greatest power is his ability to don a different skull and inherit its powers, granting him new abilities. You can hold up to two skulls at a time, and swapping skulls also unleashes a powerful ability, encouraging the player to switch up their playstyle on the fly. You gather up to nine artifacts to gain passive buffs to create a stronger build. You have to keep an eye on the traits your artifacts have to help you create a build with synergy, as the more similar traits they have, they create more and stronger effects depending on what you want or are going for. You also have the ability to gather bones from scrapping skulls you don't want to use and use those bones to upgrade one of your skulls for your current run. And like you might guess, more powerful skulls grant more bones. As you can see, there's a lot more going on other than what you can glean from the surface level. Keeping it short so we can move on, the boss fights are fun and boy they get really hard near the end. I still haven't beaten this game. My only complaint is the levels get reused a lot, but there are so, so many different skulls to change the gameplay up, I can't really complain. I'm certain there are some I still haven't used. At the time of recording, they've come out with their first DLC after a full release, so there's definitely more content coming to this game. Next up, we have Ashwalkers. This game is a narrative-driven survival game, where you make difficult choices to keep your survivors alive and complete your mission. Your goal is to find the Dome of Domes, a supposed technological safe haven that is the mothership of the domes like your own survivors are from, so you may survive this harsh post-apocalyptic world. Without knowing if this place really exists, and if it does, is it habitable, and it is your duty as pathfinders to risk your life for the sake of your people. Everything you do is a decision that could potentially change the course of your adventure, from spending energy to collect resources, to choosing how to deal with social encounters and threats in the wild. You also have to make hard choices at camp. How big the fire is can make you more visible to threats, but it allows your travelers to rest better, and you can't always heal and feed everyone. If you have no energy, you can't gather resources, and if they're cold or hungry, they'll start taking damage over time. As you journey, your resources deplete, adding to the anxiety of the monumental task before you. The visual style is charming, the world you walk in is kind of reminiscent of Borderlands to me, and in some scenes, hand-drawn images depict what's going on and they're all very well done. The environments are properly desolate, and marching through these mostly empty places feels properly depressing and terrifying. There's an astounding amount of choices that you make in this game. Everything you do feels like it carries a lot of weight. Sometimes I did feel like all the walking was a little drab, but it's better than looking at a static picture, and it really helps create the sense of scale a nearly 100 day journey requires. It wouldn't be at all the same without it. If you like survival games and choices matter narrative games, this is the one for you, as there's 34 different endings too. I haven't played one with this kind of combination of genres before, it's definitely worth checking out. Third, we have Rain World. Rain World challenges you uniquely. Instead of throwing yourself at your enemies and brute forcing your way through, you're forced to learn your place in the already existing ecosystem. You have to watch your surroundings, observe the behaviors of other creatures, and figure out a safe path as an animal of prey. You can't take too long, however, as when the rain comes, you will not survive unless you're in a safe little hovel. To even be able to rest, you need to find enough food first so you don't starve, so it forces you to leave the safety of your hole and brave the ruthlessness of the world. And boy, it is ruthless. Nearly every creature you'll encounter is going to try to eat you, and the amount of times I died is incredibly humbling. I'm not at all surprised that a lot of people don't finish this game and give up rather quickly. You can die in an instant, due to carelessness or getting backed into a corner. Your only advantage is your ability to use tools by grabbing a spear or a rock and hurling it. You can fend off some creatures, but not always. 
The pixelated visual style isn't anything revolutionary, but it is executed well and used to its fullest extent, crafting extremely unique environments, and with that, some really clever level and creature design. This game is a nice change of pace if you're up to the challenge. Next, we have Road Warden. Road Warden is a text-based RPG adventure game. The writing is incredible, and every character you meet feels alive, and every encounter feels so real. You play as an individual whose real goal is scoping out the land for the Merchant's Guild to secure a trade route on this road. To achieve this end, you're positioned as the Road Warden, so you're free to travel and no one questions you or what you're doing. There's branching dialogue, and you can choose how to approach an interaction, adding significantly more layers. You can be friendly and cordial, emotionally distant, or a straight up asshole if you so choose, among others. You have to maintain your cleanliness, as that will affect how other people interact with you, and your hunger to maintain your physical strength. Money is hard to come by, and you do need it to buy necessary supplies like food and gear, so you might consider doing work for trade, but be careful as you only have so many days before your big boss calls you back in. The pixelated visuals are beautiful and full of character, and the soundtrack is really good too. I'm a sucker for some good bass and guitar. Given its text-based nature, you're not going to get the action movie feeling from this unless you get that from reading, and this game reads like a really, really good book. You're able to quick save before anything you do, so it can kind of take away from some of the stakes, but I plan to do a playthrough without any save scumming to see how it turns out. Given the name Road Warden, you do travel this beaten path, but there will be times when you might consider straying. As they say, there's no reward without a little risk. You're just one man, or woman, with only one horse and a land you know nothing about, teeming with magic, bandits, undead, and other monsters. What's the worst that could happen? And last, but definitely not least, is Domekeeper. Domekeeper is a roguelike game about surviving a hostile planet by collecting resources underground to upgrade your dome to fend off the onslaught of monsters that come your way every few minutes. With two different characters to play, four different domes to defend with vast upgrade trees, there are several strategies to go about survival. The 2D pixelated graphics are charming, the designs of everything are very easy to read, and the animations are impressively fluid. There are a few different planets you land on, so the backgrounds will change, and sometimes with that, there will be different monster types. As you get deeper underground, the colors of the biomes change to indicate the level that you're on. This visual communication is a good indicator of when it is time to upgrade your digging tools, though you should already be doing that as you go. This game is an interesting balance of time and resource management. You can't carry a lot of resources at first as it will slow you down, so you're forced to take multiple trips and prioritize certain materials depending on the upgrades you want to add to your dome. You can upgrade your carry capacity, but then it takes away from your defensive upgrades. It seems simple enough on the surface, but sometimes you're forced to make decisions you didn't realize would be so difficult until it's in the heat of the moment. The time restraints put on you make every second matter. When I first started, I didn't think it would get the adrenaline pumping like it does when I'm nearly late defending the dome while I'm carrying too many things. The timer is a necessity, but it gives me such anxiety. I sometimes press on the floor like I'm hitting the gas pedal, like that'll make me go any faster. Outside of just survival, this game offers a relic hunt game mode, where you must find a large underground relic that weighs a ton and bring it up to your dome. Bringing relics like this offer you a perk you can't get otherwise, and opens new doorways in the upgrade tree. Things like a secondary automatic laser, a tower that shoots down projectiles, and best of all is Drillbert. I definitely recommend checking this one out. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive list. I tried to maintain some type of variety in my choices for this video. I have many more games I'd like to talk about, and some I can't justify full reviews for, so I felt this was a good way to cover some more in less detail. If there's one you'd like to see me check out for another one of these kinds of videos or for a more in-depth review, please comment down below and let me know. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.